classroom work, we knew we had to include this in today's chat. Um, so I will turn it over to Liz. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great, awesome. Okay, well, yeah, thanks Thanks so much. My name's Liz Passiolis and I'm a faculty member in the health science program at Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. And um, I was actually hoping when I kind of submitted this session to get ideas from other people, because I don't think I have the answers for um, like truly being able to show does play work in the classroom. But my hope is that um, kind of through this session, we can kind of start facilitating um, some discussions on let's show that play works. And so that's kind of really my um, hope. I mean, I'm gonna give you kind of my ideas of what I did using um, playing cornhole in my sports psychology class. Um, but my hope is, and um, I'll have like a link at the end where hopefully everyone can put in their ideas because um, I didn't know how the chat would work and everything. And so my hope is that we can um, kind of get ideas from everybody on this. And um, so really my purpose is trying to, I feel like in higher education, um, we kind of have to make a case for using play in the classroom. And I felt this myself, um, just kind of a little background from multiple comments that I got from students and faculty um, when I started implementing a cornhole game into my class. And so um, just to kind of give you a background on the play kind of activity that I was using kind of among others. Um, if anyone isn't familiar with cornhole, um, it's a beanbag tossing game. And um, so often this is used in the, like tailgate and like football games, um, where basically you throw this beanbag at those boards that you can see there on the screen and you get three points for um, making it through the hole. You get one point for putting, um, putting on the bag at, uh, or putting it on the board. And so it's a lot of fun. And so um, one unit that we have in my sports psychology class is the students learning psychological skills for um, performance enhancement. And so using things like breathing techniques or using mantras or task focused keywords, using imagery, using um, what we call pre-performance routines. And so rather than just kind of lecturing about these in class, I wanted the students to actually try them in a performance situation. And so we discuss a bit of kind of the, um, when we had like each of these class days discussing these different psychological skills, we essentially, um, I would give them a little bit on like the theory and the research behind these skills. But then I said, we got to do these skills and I want you to do them in a performance setting. So I would take the class outside. I had like six cornhole boards um, set up and we would play cornhole and the students would implement the, um, the, basically the skill that we were talking about that day. And so first we had like a baseline day just to see how they were doing a cornhole. And then we practiced breathing. And so we were out in kind of like the middle of campus um, playing, playing cornhole and the students would be um, using these skills and then kind of filling out reflective questionnaires on kind of their performance experience. And so um, when we were doing this, there was kind of a wide variety of comments um, one, there were several like students walking by who would see us out there and they're like, this is a class. I want to take this class. And so I guess one thing in, in a, um, I guess a positive of play, if it can get students to take your class, um, that's always, that's always good. Uh, and so, um, th those type of comments, I feel like are positive. Um, you can see kind of other comments here. Um, the, these are both written comments from like feedback forms and kind of just things that students told me. And so there were comments about like, yeah, I felt like I learned a lot learning by doing or it helped me concentrate on the skills. Um, you can see some different comments on, yeah, this was really enjoyable, which um, we already had mentioned in the conference today. That's one benefit of using play. Uh, students says, said things like, well, yeah, I'd rather play a game than do work any, any time of the day. And that's okay, but like Lisa mentioned, I didn't just want this to be like on just play that we are kind of doing the work here. Um, or um, 
some students on their feedback form um, didn't feel like it was worthwhile because they they thought, well, I wasn't as prepared for the test because we were just playing cornhole in class. All right. And then another comment that kind of really got to me, um, this was actually a faculty that walked by and kind of laughed and said, um, well, this well, isn't this a nice break from class? And so some of these comments about like, well, yeah, we're just playing or this is a break from class. Um, I mean, I think they were well-meaning, but it was kind of like that this play was in opposition to learning. When in fact, my hope was that the play was the learning, that I was trying to create this immersive experience where students were engaged, connecting with one another, really thinking about and trying these psychological skills. Um, but kind of being like, la like, I don't know, I felt bad. Like I was kind of being laughed at, like, what are you doing playing cornhole um, in the middle of a college campus, like during a class session? And so I thought, all right, um, I have to be able to back this up. I have to be able to make a case for why I would use play um, in a college classroom. And I think maybe if we're using play, we maybe all have to all have to do um, do that. And so I thought, okay, well, how can I kind of make my case here? And so the um, the first one is, I guess, straight up, like attach this to or test learning outcomes. And so that's kind of what I did. And so if you can um, kind of see here, like how did students ultimately do like on their on their tests? And so um, the red is just I was able to compare it to another section of the class that was kind of more of a traditional lecture class. And then the green here is the class where I use the play activity. And so you can um, you can kind of see there where um, it, I had a pre-assessment kind of on what did they know about these psychological skills prior to kind of doing, um, doing the unit. And so both the traditional class and the cornhole um, activity class improved from the units. And it seemed like pretty much a toss up that there was no significant differences um, between kind of knowledge based on testing for this traditional lecture class and the cornhole activity. And so I guess that seems like, all right, well, it's even there based on their test scores, but I still would maybe have to kind of make a better case because, you know, why is it worth it to kind of set, you know, spend all this time, set up this play activity when they're just doing as well as they would have done in kind of this traditional lecture class. And so I also wanted to know, well, what did they think about their learning, right? And so you can see here, and these were, um, this was based on like feedback questions. And so what I'm actually, actually interested by the end of the session is to find out what other faculty use in terms of student feedback questions. I think that's something we can collaborate on. So you'll see these questions in the boxes are kind of what I used in, um, for activity feedback. And so I asked them, like, how much do you think this activity helped you learn? And so you can see here, it was over half, um, half the class that were giving these ratings of like eight, nine or 10, and this helped me learn. And so I guess that's a pretty strong case, but you know, there were still a lot of students where they didn't um, feel like they necessarily learned. And I guess that was um, worthwhile to me kind of hearing about their feedback uh, because I think I needed to kind of articulate more and maybe other professors at play do also in kind of connecting the play to the learning outcomes and letting the students know that they are learning through doing this play activity and maybe making that more clear to them. And so um, maybe you guys have, have thoughts, on, thoughts on that in terms of ha having students realize that well, play, play is learning and helping them um, kind of make that connection. Um, then another factor that has already been mentioned today is enjoyment. And so I asked the students, well, how much did you enjoy this activity? Um, the majority of students enjoyed the activity. Several students recommended this um, for future use. But um, like Lisa mentioned, I feel like, well, just because I enjoyed it and they enjoyed it, like there needs to be there needs to be more, right? I need to be asking about kind of other things here. Um, more so than their test scores, what I really care about is are they going to be able to like apply these strategies? And so are they going to, going to be able to apply breathing or imagery 
in kind of a performance setting later on when they have to give like a talk in class or if they're an athlete and they have a big game. So in kind of these different life situations. Uh, and so um, like how, how well could they apply these strategies? And so once again, I kind of had mixed results for that. Um, and it was helpful for me to get this feedback um, because some of the students were so caught up in like the game of cornhole um, because they would get um, just participation points for kind of participating. Um, but then some of them like totally forgot about the psychological strategies um, because they wanted to, I was playing too, they wanted to beat me, they wanted to beat their friends. And so the game in their mind became the important thing and not like the content I was incorporating with the game. And so that's kind of something else that I wanted to kind of think about further or get ideas on um, how do we make sure that they're kind of, in, they're learning the content kind of um, through the game. So that kind of application piece. Um, also, I was interested in, did this create kind of like a, um, a comfortable learning situation for you? And so I asked them about comfort and I asked them about um, how likely are to, you to use this stuff in the future? And so one kind of finding among many results, I found that the more um, students were comfortable um, with kind of the material and the activity, this kind of correlated with they were more like, they're more likely to report that they're gonna use this later on. And so I'm glad that I was kind of asking these questions about comfort, because I think that's a big factor in like games or activities um, and just in the classroom environment in general. So that's, maybe that's something that if you're not asking your students about that, that um, you could kind of include. Then another thing um, I asked students about was flow. And so, um, I wanted to kind of lead a little imagery activity uh, real briefly for you guys. This is once again, because of time constraints, it's gonna be pretty short. Um, but we're, since we're not gonna play during this session, we're gonna do, do the next best thing and imagine ourselves playing, okay? So what I want you guys to do is kind of take a deep breath, close your eyes if you're comfortable with it. And I want you to imagine yourself doing some activity that you really find enjoyable and engaging. And so not necessarily like a class activity, but anything in your life. And not enjoyable like relaxing, not like lounging on the beach, taking a nap, but something that you find kind of like engaging and invigorating and enjoyable. And so for me, that's basketball, um, you know, could be kind of any activity for you. And you could think of like a current activity or if it's hard to think of something, you could even think back to like when you were a kid and something that you like really found engaging and enjoyable. And so you can picture yourself doing the activity. You, um, with imagery, you can either kind of picture yourself from your own eyes or you can kind of like be like a video camera watching yourself as in like an external view. And with imagery, we, don't, we just don't want to use visual images, but you kind of want also want to maybe think about like the sounds, think about the smells or even the taste in your mouth when you're doing the activity. And even think about like the thoughts that run through your mind or even like the emotions that you're having when you're doing this activity. Okay, and I'm always smiling when I'm thinking of my activity. So hopefully you smile too. And so you can open your eyes and kind of thinking about um, when you participate in that activity, you can kind of look through this list here. Um, Cause in prior semesters, and I talked about flow in my class and I would kind of say like rank one through 10, but um, I've incorporated um, kind of more validated measures of flow. This is the flow short scale. 
And you can kind of just see how you might rate yourself um, on these things. And so I thought like, these are the things that I want to capture in class. And so um, you kind of see here um, things like time, you don't notice time passing. You're not having difficulty concentrating. You're lost in thought. Like that's the things that I want for my students, right? And so um, sometimes, especially as adults and in academics, it's hard to capture flow. So we have to look at the, um, look to the experts on flow. So these are the experts um, that I know on flow. You can kind of see the characteristics there where this is something challenging, but you're like totally immersed in, um, in the task. And so this is kind of the experts here. These are my kids. Um, and Luke. It's a challenge path, but they're totally immersed. So um, when I think about flow, it has to do a lot with the task. And it just so happened um, for them, they were kind of experiencing this like challenging experience um, that they were totally immersed in. And so I think we can kind of look at kids and how they get immersed in experience and try to replicate that. And so I kind of look to, I'm interested in kind of youth sports and youth sport research. And we could look at some of this research that maybe we could translate over to higher education. And so this was an interesting study where hundreds of kids were asked, well, what makes um, sports play, um, playing sports fun? And it wasn't winning. Um, it wasn't necessarily like team cheers. But if you can see here, um, it was trying hard. And so that's kind of interesting that what was fun about sports, the top one was trying hard, and then there were positive team dynamics um, and positive coaching. And so I thought this really, really paralleled things that I was reading about in youth sports and reading about kind of play in higher education. And so I know um, David had mentioned this article in, um, in reference to um, higher education and some of the things kind of line up with studies of kind of youth sports in terms of kind of the teacher engagement and the positive coaching and the trying hard. And so I thought that was kind of like an interesting, um, interesting parallel there um, where I've tried to kind of take things from youth sports. And I found when I'm coaching my five-year-old so um, soccer team, I'm trying to kind of use the same principles as when, when I'm coaching a college class. And so, um, these were just some take home points here that I think we really need to kind of gather data on the effectiveness in terms of outcomes and um, kind of think carefully about like class activity feedback and what information are we gathering um, and look to our own experiences of kind of fun and play um, to kind of think about what are we doing with these games or activities um, in terms of learning for our students. And then I think we really need to collaborate um, in terms of like thinking about these, thinking about these ideas. And so I'm hoping I can put this link here in the chat on, um, I'm not as, I think as tech savvy as, um, I was trying to get to the chat here and I'll try to post this in the chat. And my thought was at some point today, if, um, you click on this link and you could kind of put in your ideas about um, how do you measure um, activity or play? Um, what questions do you use on activity feedback forms? Like I shared a couple, um, but I would be interested to really hear what other faculty are sharing. And then kind of what student experiences do you hope to capture with your um, class or activity? And then if you put in your email, I could kind of compile, compile a list or pass it on to David and Lisa and kind of um, combine all these um, answers. And so we could get ideas from everybody. And so um, that would, 
I mean, that would be really helpful for me. It would probably be really um, helpful for other faculty also. And then um, kind of my final take home point here is um, I think we can kind of try to learn from the experts. Like I'm learning a lot from my kids or we can reflect back to when we were a kid um, it, or learn from our students in terms of they're the ones like the kids and the students, they're, they're the ones that are really the experts at making play work. And so if we ask them, they will, they will tell us how. So thanks, um, thanks for paying attention and I look forward to kind of learning more ideas. <laughs>